You know, I saw a headline today that said that uh, Antrim, the deadliest film ever made, was like number one Amazon streaming right now. Okay. And I remember reading about this last year and being like, oh my God, there's a forbidden film. <laughs> there's a cursed film out there. You know, the idea is that this film was shot sometime in the 70s and nobody knew about it. And then they played it at a movie theater in Budapest in 1988 and it burned down to the ground. I feel like I should be making scary music on you. You should do it, yeah. 56 people died in Budapest, right? Then, in San Francisco, they played it a few years later and there was a riot. And all of these different guys who were running film festivals and it was submitted, they died in mysterious causes. This is the deadliest film ever made. And finally, these guys got it, and they shot a documentary about it, and they have this movie that's got all these talking heads, and then they play the film. This cursed film that will kill you. And you're like, Amazon, what are you doing? Trying to kill people over here? Wait, wait, wait. Did, did this all, like, happen before before the corona apocalypse? Oh, boy. Um... Actually, yeah, I think it did happen. But you know what? We're not going to give... We're not going to validate this, okay? <laughs> so when I first heard about this, I was like, oh, man, it's a forbidden film, you know? Like, I'm, like, reading about the occult doing all this stuff. I'm like, this is this is really real. Yeah. And I did some research, and I was like, yeah, I couldn't find any real information about that uh, Budapest right. fire. Right. I couldn't find really any real information about that San Francisco thing. And, uh, yeah. and of course, ultimately, you know, the, the whole thing is, you know, we got Blair Witch to get, right? Yeah. Um, but that's well, fine. Did. I, I did. You did. You, you knew. You knew from the get go. You know, and this movie went so far as to do a thing where, like, at Cannes, they had people like sign waivers. You know, and then such uh, a good gimmick. Oh, and then in, in uh, and then in the uh, Fantafest Roma, they had a priest uh, bless the theater. So oh, you know that I, is oh that is that is playing up the gimmick so yeah, well. It's it's great. I just want to have a discussion about these films that people kind of feel like are cursed yeah they might get you they might kill you you know it's 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 the ring of it all right it's, it's the thing that you feel like it's cursed or you think it's cursed and yet you still go watch it or you still buy it yeah or, or in the least you're contemplating should i maybe yeah. i should and, and it's, it's maybe i want to be cursed <laughs> well maybe you do i mean it's possible i mean do you do you want to be cursed no i'm good i mean you're cursed to do this with me uh mm. for the you know future so Oh, that so, is a bit so of a I mean, I'm, I'm already cursed. So yeah, so how, yeah, how much worse could it get? Yeah. It's kind of a, it's like a YouTube Gone Girl scenario, uh, but you're Ben Affleck. I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm, I'm a very good director. Hey, that guy was Batman, so, you know, <laughs> he wins. I'm Batman! You're, you're Batman, yes. Uh, there's a history of this kind of thing. So oh, first yeah. off, you know, when I first read about this, I was like, oh man, like, we're getting Blair Witched again. Yes. Like, back, back in 1999, I, I remember this, uh, you know, that... The, when the Blair Witch, when my friends and I saw the Blair Witch Project, uh, we thought it was real. Yeah. This was the beginning of, uh, of the internet. Yeah, yeah. The thing is that for, for those of you who, like, you know, were too young in, in 99, you know, that dial-up internet. Yeah. You know, like, that, most people had dial-up. Like, the, the vast amount of knowledge that you can get now was not available. It's like, people were still looking things up in encyclopedias. Yeah. I mean, the encyclopedia, like... Certainly wouldn't have that. The newspaper wouldn't be covering it. Like, who's going to go, I'm going to go to the library to learn about this Blair Witch thing. I know. I was like, oh my God, it's this movie where they found this footage in the woods of these kids that went out there and like, they're just putting out, they're putting in the theater. Isn't that crazy? You know, and, and maybe, yeah. and I think, you know, part of it too is the idea that, um, you know, documentaries yeah, well, were really big. It was, would have theatrical runs back then. Yeah, it, it was It was a really effective trailer because yeah. the whole point of the trailer was to trick you into thinking that it was real. Yeah. And, and there was no reason for you to think it wasn't because yeah. it wasn't like it had real actors in it or anything. Everyone was an unknown. And, mm -hmm. and you know, again, this wasn't a time where everything was available on the internet. Like, you know, these these kids, like, they weren't internet celebrities. There, there was no such thing as an internet celebrity. There, like, there was no social media. Yeah, there was know? nothing. So basically, they kind of fooled a lot of us, at least a lot of younger people and a lot of people that didn't know anything. And But this is all part of a proud tradition that's been going on for a long time. I mean, there was, uh, gosh, I don't even know what they're called right now. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up and, like, insert name here. Uh, but there was this whole thing uh, in films back in the 60s and the 70s. Uh, and, and it was kind of like grindhouse -y. They would showcase, like, documentary, these shocking things that were happening in the real world. And there would be, like, cockfighting in Peru. And there right. would be, like, you know, uh, 
crimes being, you know, in real life footage of crime. It was like early Faces of Death stuff. Okay. You know, uh, and, and often they would also like film stuff also and like add it in there as like real life, but it wouldn't be real life. Huh. And it was this real weird mix. And the idea was that this is all really happening. You know, virgin sacrifices in the wild. You know what I mean? Um, and, and a lot of it was false, but they were because they were mixing it with real life footage and stuff. People believed it was real. Right. Uh, and and so, you know, this 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 is like. What's crazy a proud about tradition. this? It's a proud <laughs> tradition of messing with our heads, right? I mean, you know, even going in, you know, after that, of course, The Exorcist. Yeah. But The Exorcist was like so interesting. The Exorcist is what, like seventy-seven, I think. And The Exorcist was all like, um, that was like word of mouth stuff. Yeah. That was like people were literally like, you would go on the news and they were like people hyperventilating. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, they they must have like sought out people that don't like horror movies or yeah. that were religious and be like, you you should watch this movie and we want to know. know what you think of this. Well, it's funny because when, when I was younger and learning about this, I was like, wow, it's such a powerful film, right? Uh, and, and, like, and it is. Know, it is it, an it incredibly like, well-made, awesome film. It is, it is you know. Uh, and, and, and it was very shocking yes. for the time. Uh, even though, let's be honest, we're now at the tail end of a time where you could watch hard hard x-rated pornography in theaters That's it was true. a very different time uh but i will also say that a lot of people are on acid back then like yeah. quite a bit yeah so if i was like just dropping acid and going to the movie theaters and i know i've seen i saw the exorcist i would definitely you know have a panic attack uh nothing i've ever done acid before but if i did it would be to watch the exorcist <laughs> i think so i i yeah I have no words. Yeah, this I have, is probably, I have, probably fair. I have no words. Probably fair. Uh, Cannibal Holocaust, too, in 1980. This was also really famous. Yeah. They definitely wanted you to believe it was a real thing. Uh, and many people did. And many people did. And so much so, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, but famously, the director was put on trial, Italian court, because it was so lifelike, the death, um, you know, uh, for the 80s, at least. Uh, and, and also, what he had done, it was a stroke of genius, is he actually uh, contractually obligated all the actors in the film to hide from the media for an entire year. So everyone literally thought these people had died that's so like, great that uh, is on like, this island that's brilliant it's so brilliant right until they literally like got put on trial and had to bring the actors into trial and be like see they're not dead yeah. you jerks <laughs> they're right here it's and then cinema someone, yeah these are not stunt doubles yeah these are the real people Oh man, they're not dead. I know, but but now you know with uh, with YouTube and conspiracy theory, they'd be like, he actually got lookalikes yeah, and did yeah. kill those people. But um, I, I even you know, uh, The Conjuring did something similar uh, in a early screening in Chicago. They were like, people have found that have seen this movie have noticed strange things happening to them after leaving the movie, and so we have a priest here <laughs> just to make sure that uh, so everyone good. is safe after the movie. It, it plays with the imagination in a way. You know, we're always talking about this idea of having. Uh, you know, AR, augmented reality, yeah. or like four, you know, cinema four, where we're getting like, you know, they're putting rain on us and you can smell a vision. And it's that like extended bit of filmmaking and yeah. storytelling that you get beyond just what you're seeing in front of you. And this, I, this definitely fits the bill, right? If you're watching Antrim and you believe this might be putting a curse on you. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna make it feel like a lot crazier than just, this is just some movie someone made. Yeah, well, I mean, when, when it's a suggested, like a suggested thing, it's like, oh, people have felt weird. Like, you're gonna be looking out for, oh, oh, am I feeling weird? It's like, you know, like, you don't notice that the fan is actually, like, blowing, you're like, why do I feel wind in my legs? <laughs> exactly, you know? like, exactly. You know. Especially if they're in the forest, like doing a little seance, and like the wind is like blowing. You're like, I felt that. Did you guys feel that? Yeah, yeah. It's like all of a sudden, like the person next to you like rubs up against you a little bit, and you're like, oh shit, it was a spirit. <laughs> it was definitely the devil. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, one hundred percent, like without without a doubt. Okay, so let us know if you guys have watched anything that you feel like it's been cursed or or that like you know you came out of it being like ooh. I really shouldn't have watched that. Yeah. Did you guys watch Antrim? I don't know. I didn't. It might be cursed. I wouldn't watch that. <laughs> that's that's insane. You're a crazy person. Uh, all right, that's it. Yeah. We're, we're, we wasted enough Things of your time. Things and stuff. All right, bye. <laughs>